Hello, welcome to another exciting Unity tutorial with me, Romy Fauzi. In this video, I'm going to explain how to create an enemy movement in Playmaker. First, I'm going to explain what asset I have imported in order to do this tutorial. So here under the sprite, I have imported the Dino sprite, and you can download the sprite from this website. I'm going to put the link in the description. And the other thing that I've already prepared is the enemy game object so basically for the enemy i have an empty game object and inside this empty game object we have a couple of objects that makes up the enemy here we have enemy entity and the enemy entity is the one that handles the enemy movement and also collision so actually the parent object doesn't do anything other than grouping all of the object that needs to be together so whenever we copy the enemy we can just copy the whole thing and then we can readjust all of the child objects and here under the enemy entity, I have capsule collider attach and also a rigid body with a freeze rotation check. And under the enemy entity, we have this dino sprite and the dino sprite also have an animation. So I'm going to show you the animation of this dino sprite. If we go to the animation, the dino sprite have three animations. First, the idle animation. Second, the walk animation. And third is the dead animation. And I've set up the animator like this. So basically, we only need two parameters. One is a float, and I call the parameter speed. And the second one is a trigger called that. So basically, the starting state is a blend tree. And inside this blend tree, we are basically transitioning from the idle to walk depending on the speed value. So if it's zero, then it's going to be idling. And if it's one, it's going to be walking. And here outside the blend tree here, we have another state for playing the dead animation and for the transition i've disabled the has exit time and add the condition using the dead trigger so yeah that is basically all that i've set up i've just put a box here for the ground for testing out and the other object under the enemy game object is the right boundaries and this is basically an empty game object and also the left boundaries and we can adjust this position to limit the movement of the enemy here so now let's start develop the FSM. So let's select the enemy entity here and open the Playmaker window. And I'm going to add a new FSM and I'm going to call this movement. And inside this movement here, I'm going to add the set velocity to the. And we need to define a variable. So let's just add a new variable on the X axis. And let's just call this speed. And I'm going to enable every frame. And here under the variable, we want to show the speed on the inspector so we can change the value on the inspector here. I'm going to set this to 3. And the next variable that we want to add is the right boundaries and the left boundary. And both of these variables should be a type of game object, so I'm going to change that. And let's just also enable on inspector. And now that we have this shown in our inspector, we can drag the right empty game object to the right boundary. And we can drag the left empty game object to the left boundary. The next thing that we want to add is a get position action. And basically, we want to record the X position of each of the boundaries. So I'm going to specify game object here and then pick the left boundary and I'm going to save the X position onto a new variable. So let's just call this X left bounds and we don't need to check every frame and I'm going to duplicate this action here and for the second action I'm going to minimize this. The second one I'm going to set this to the right boundary and then we want to save the x position to a new variable so let's just call this x right bounds and here i want to add another get position and this will be the player and i want to store the x position here to a new variable let's just call this current x position and enable every frame so we want to check for its position every frame and then we want to add a float compare here for the float compare we want to set the first float to be the 
current x position and the second float to be the x left bounds and we want to add tolerance here i'm going to set the tolerance to uh, 0 0.3 and check every frame and we need to add a new event so I'm, I'm going to add a new event called flip movement and i'm going to add the transition flip movement to this state here and then whenever the x position values equal to the x left bounds with tolerance of 0 0.3 we want to send the flip movement here and let's just copy the float compare here by pressing ctrl c and ctrl v to paste it and then we want to compare this also with the x right bounds and we don't need to change any other parameter here and let's minimize this so now we need to add a new state and let's just call this flip speed and here under the flip speed we want to multiply the float speed with negative one and we don't need to check every frame at a finish transition and we can just connect the flip movement to the flip speed here and when it's finished we want to go to a new state first and then we can just call this state wait and then connect the finish state here and i'm going to add also a finish transition and connect the finish back to the first state here let's change the first state to move and here inside the wait we want to add a wait action and for the time we can set to 1.5 so basically after flipping the speed, we want to wait for a while before entering the move state. So the float compare doesn't trigger right away, causing an infinite loop. And when it's finished, then we want to go to the finish event here. But we want to copy the set velocity to the action to this wait here. So after the enemy flip its speed, we want to keep moving the enemy. Okay. Now let's save the scene here. And now let's give it a try. There you go, we have back and forth movement. So now the other thing that we need to add is the animation and also we need to flip the object so it's facing the correct way. So here under the flip speed, we want to duplicate the speed value here to a new variable. So I'm going to add the set float value. And here we can just create a new variable and let's just call this act scale. And for the float value, we want to duplicate the speed value. And we don't need to check every frame. And basically, x scale value can be 3 or negative 3, depending on the direction. And we need to clamp this value to 1. So we need to add the float clamp action. And we want to clamp the x scale variable and set the minimum value to negative 1 and the maximum value to 1. And now we have this clamp value we can apply this value to our scale so we can just add a set scale action and then we can pass the x scale to the x component of the set scale action so let's just do that and then minimize all of this save this and the other thing that we want to trigger is the walking animation so here under the move we need to get the velocity of the dyno and we want to grab the x velocity so let's just grab the x velocity to a new variable i'm going to call this x velocity and make sure every frame is checked and then we want to set this value to an absolute value so let's just add a float absolute and make sure the float absolute is below the get velocity and pick the x velocity here also check every frame and then we can just add a set animator float and we want to modify this speed value here so let's just type speed with the correct capitalization and for the value we want to pass the x velocity and make sure every frame is checked and we need to apply this to the visual game object so let's just change the game object to specify game object and then drag the visual game object to the slot here okay so now we have the animation action i'm going to copy all of this here this three action here by pressing ctrl c and then under the weight i'm going to paste this here and then put this above the weight action 
and let's save this and now let's give it a try if we press play the animation should play and the dino should also flip okay so now we have this working we need to create the death fsm for the dino now let's give it a try here let's just add a square and i'm going to add a box collider 2d for the square here so now if we add a a box here you see it stop and it plays the idle animation so yeah the animation plays according to its state when it's walking it plays the walking animation and when it stop it plays the idle animation so now let's create the dead event here so now let's create the dead fsm let's add a new fsm here to the enemy entity and let's just call this dead fsm under the state here i'm going to add a collision to the event and we want to detect certain tag in this case i'm going to add the player bullet and we want to create a new event let's just call this dead and whenever we hit object that has tag of player bullet we want to transition to the dead event so let's just add the dead transition and add a new state here and connect the dead transition to this new state and let's just call this wait for collision and for the state i'm going to call this dead and let's set the set event under the collision event to this dead transition and inside the dead state first we want to trigger the animation which is the dead state here so we need to trigger this dead trigger i'm going to type dead in the trigger option and i'm going to specify the game object to this child object here and then i'm going to also set the velocity of this dino here to zero on the x-axis but i'm not going to enable the every frame and then i'm going to run the enable fsm action and we want to use the owner but we want to pick the movement fsm and i'm going to disable the fsm and also disable the reset on exit checkbox and save this and we want to also disable the component here the rigid body and the capsule collider and we can just simply destroy that component so use destroy component here and then we can pick the component let's just grab the capsule collider 2d and we want to add a destroy component and the second one we want to add the rigid body 2d and this should destroy both of this component here so later when the enemy is dead the player won't be having issue when hits the enemy because there are no collider and rigid body anymore and let's give it a try and take a look at the component here whenever it's dead you see that the component gets removed so now we have the enemy working i'm going to save the enemy as a prefab the main enemy here let's go to the prefabs folder and i'm going to drag this enemy here and now for testing with our previous tutorial let's just open the 2d platformer scene i'm going to save the scene here and for the player i'm going to check the prefabs that we are instantiating whenever the player shoot okay it's the bullet tutorial so i'm going to go to the prefabs folder and select the bullet tutorial game object and i'm going to set this tag to player bullet and then uh, we want to add the enemy prefabs to this scene here so let's just drag the enemy prefabs oh sorry this is the bullet uh cancel this let's just drag the enemy prefabs and then put it on the scene here and now as you can see we cannot see the enemy because the sorting layer so i'm going to go to the visual game object here so i'm going to change the visual to mid ground and then i'm going to apply the prefabs here okay so now uh, as you can see we can adjust the right and the left position depending on the area if you want and now i'm going to save this scene here and we can test this out okay the camera is to zoom i'm going to zoom this out a bit I'm going to set this to four probably and now let's just try to shoot the enemy oops sorry 
okay because our bullet is a trigger so in order to test this we can just disable the is trigger option and now let's try to shoot this again there you go here as you can see the bullet doesn't get destroyed when it hits the enemy so we can fix that by going to the enemy entity here and under the playmaker window we want to select the prefabs and edit the prefabs here under the prefabs go to the dead fsm and we can store the collider to a new game object so i'm going to store the bullet here and now whenever this gets populated we can destroy that game object so let's just add a destroy object and then we can just pick the bullet variable so this will destroy the object right away and for the sake of optimization we can change the collision to the event to a trigger to the event so let's just add a trigger to the event and here we can just add the player bullet and also send this to that and we also want to store the collider I'm going to leave the collision to the event here so it will work both on object that has is trigger options checked or unchecked and let's just go back to the project panel and under the bullet tutorial I'm going to re-enable the is trigger option and save the scene save the project and I'm going to change the camera size to 4 by default here and save the scene again and now with the bullet as a trigger this should also kill the enemy and it will also destroy the bullet so yeah that is how we create an enemy movement in the next video we are going to discuss how to create health bar for the player and how to create mechanics that if the player hits the enemy then the health gets decreased or gets subtract okay thanks a lot for watching i hope you enjoy this tutorial and if you like this video hit that like button and do subscribe See you in the next video.